I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to be looking at managing the time of audio files within Logic Pro. Now, if you've ever decided to drag an Apple loop into a Logic project, you'll know that they have the really nice little habit of stretching and forming exactly the right number of bars and lengths that your project uh, tempo is at. In other words, if you take an Apple loop and bring it in at 60 beats per minute or 120 beats per minute, it will conform to one or two or four bars or however long that loop is. And that's because the Apple loops have been designed to do that. They automatically stretch in terms of their length and their tempo to fit your project. But what if you're working with audio files that don't do that? How do you accommodate them into your project? In other words, how do you time stretch them? Well, there are a number of ways we can do that within Logic Pro, and we're going to explore them all here. So the first thing I'm going to do is to mute this final track within my piece. I don't need that just yet. And before that, we're going to listen to just the first four bars of this um, project. I've got two MIDI regions running here, and I've got an audio loop, which has been recorded and captured, bounced in place at 108 beats per minute, which is where my uh, project tempo is right now. So this should be bang in time. Okay, so I've let that run so you can hear which part this is. It's the beat loop that's in the middle of our project. Okay, so fine. What I want to do is to change the tempo. I've decided that this project isn't quick enough. I want to take it up to 114 beats per minute. Okay, let's try it again now. This time I'm gonna put the click track in and we'll see how that sounds. Okay, so of course it's completely fallen apart. The, log the uh, loop doesn't know that I've changed the tempo, and so it's still playing at 100 beats per minute, but of course the two MIDI regions have uh, changed their speed in order to conform to the new tempo. So the first thing I could potentially do would be to go back to 108 and think, hmm, how could I change this? Well, let's go back there for a moment and actually just sort our loop out first of all. You can see that the way that this uh, file has been bounced is that I've got a loop that's paying perfectly in time, but what's actually happening is that it's running on a little bit. And if what I want to do is to get this loop in time, it would be really a good idea for me to first of all, make sure that this region is four bars long or absolutely pinned to a certain number of bars. So I've just chopped the end off it. So if I do that, and if I go back to 114 beats per minute, obviously I'm going to see that the loop overruns because of course it's still fixed at 108 beats per minute. But what I can do firstly is I can come to the option button and hold that down whilst clicking in the bottom right hand corner of this region. And what I can then do is to drag this back so that it becomes four bars long again. And you can see that the little pop-up window there is saying stretch. And what that's doing is it's time stretching this region for me. And it's then going to render a new audio file so that it's the same length that I need it to be. I need it to be four bars long and now it is. Should now be in time with any luck. So that's the first way in which I can make a time stretch, just directly within Logic's main page. But if we want to see a more involved version of that, we can double click on this audio file and open up the audio editor. Now, just one thing here. You may find when you first open Logic for the first time that actually you can't see this page, that you don't see it quite like I'm seeing it here. And that's because when you first open Logic, you're given the option to sort of update from GarageBand. If you're a GarageBand user who's decided to up, um, upgrade to Logic, um, then you may have chosen the little option that looks like the GarageBand symbol when it came to first opening Logic. In other words, what you're presented with is a parameter set, which is more in keeping with what GarageBand can do. Alternatively, there's an advanced set of tools that are available to you, and you can switch those on by going to Logic's preferences. Go into the preferences and make sure that the advanced range of options is on, and you'll see audio editing amongst other things. And within the functions menu here, what I have a chance to do is to come to the time and pitch machine. Now, this is a little processing area which allows me to be a little bit more selective about how I want to process the um, time and pitch of this audio file. I know, for instance, that the uh, tempo 
to start with, it was 108 beats per minute. I wrote it on the audio file so I would remember. And what I want to do is to take it up to 114 beats per minute, which is just here as the destination tempo. So that's going to work out fine. What I also have a chance to do if I want to is to make a transposition to its pitch. Now there are 100 cents per semitone, so a transposition of 100 cents means that it will go up one semitone. Equally, I could put in a negative value there if I wanted to transpose the pitch downwards. So once I've specified the things that I want to do here and to have the parameters the way that I want them to be, I can hit process and paste, and what will happen is that our audio will get processed. And hopefully now at 114 beats per minute, it's going to be in time. So that's two ways that we've been able to look at time stretching. Once within the main window, and then separately here within the audio edit options and looking at the time and pitch machine. But I've gone back to where we started, back to 108 beats per minute with the loop back in its original tempo to look at the third way in which we could do this. So what I'm gonna do is to come back down to here and just check that everything is working at 108 beats per minute as it was at the beginning. Sure enough. Okay, so what I'm going to do this time is to use flex editing as a means to make this audio become elastic. In other words, whilst the time stretching that I've applied within the main window or within the time and pitch machine is great if I know definitely that I want to move for 108 to 114 beats per minute, what flex editing is going to allow me to do is to say, yeah, but what if I want to change the tempo again later? Or what if I decide I want a halfway house between 108 and 114? If I decide 110 beats per minute is what I want, do I want to process that audio a second time? Well, not really. So what I'm going to do instead is to turn on flex editing. And instead, what I'm going to do is to select slicing mode here. And what that's going to do is to go through and analyze the transient moments, the transient elements within this beat loop. And what it's then going to do is to say, right, Having done that, what I can do is to change the tempo to anything I like. And what Logic will do is to make sure that all of those points stay at their relative positions. In other words, if a transient is detected at the beginning of bar three, that transient's detection's job is to make sure that that bit of audio remains at the beginning of bar three, even if I change the tempo. So I've gone back to 114, press play, should be in time. And the advantage of flex editing is that without me having to reprocess it again, if I suddenly decided I wanted to hear this at 125 beats per minute, it should still be in time. Okay, I definitely prefer it at a slower tempo, so I'm going to take it back down. Let's go to 110 as a sort of intermediate position between those two tempi. Okay, so, so far we've looked at a whole range of ways in which we can manipulate tempo. There's one other way that we could do this too. I've got another loop here, and what I'm going to do firstly is to bounce this down as an audio file to turn it into audio. And these are some sort of taps. I'm going to just make these come into the project and sort of be uh, this sort of slightly tappy sound. Let's just hear this by itself so you can hear the sound we're going to be dealing with. Okay, and again, what I'm going to do is to make sure that this loop is exactly four bars long. Okay, so at the point that I've bounced this, our tempo is 110 beats per minute. So of course, if we wanted uh, to change the tempo, we're in the position that we were with our first loop to start with. We'd have to make sure that this particular audio file conforms to the tempo that we want to work with. But what I can actually do is I can sort of chop this region up, not by turning it into a series of audio slices, but by turning it into a series of individual samples. What I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this to a new sampler track. So this audio file, I'm going to chop up by converting it to a new sampler instrument. Now, when I do this, I have a chance to either take the entire sample and put it on one key of my keyboard, or I can chop it up by using its transient markers, which means that every little detected tap is going to be assigned to the next key of my keyboard. 
And what's going to happen when I do this, I'm going to choose the sampler to be the host of this particular sound, is I just need to make sure that the key range is as wide as it can possibly be. Down here I can see that it's going to detect 50 separate zones. And what I want to do is to make sure that the range of keys I have available is going to accommodate that number of individual samples, which it is comfortably. So what I'm actually going to do is to move this up so that the first note is on C1, the bottom of my keyboard range, and that's fine. I'm still only using 50 zones of a maximum of 92. In other words, I've got more keys available than there are samples that are about to be created. So having specified my key range, I'm going to press OK. And what Logic's then going to do is to turn this series of taps into a stream of MIDI notes. If I double click here, we can see that every single one of those has been converted into its own little MIDI note. And if I press play in solo mode, we'll hear exactly the same loop, but now it's being triggered over MIDI. Okay, and because this is MIDI, of course, what that means is, if I decided to take the tempo down again, let's say to 98 beats per minute, not only will my uh, flex edited loop change in tempo, because these are being triggered over MIDI, these taps will as well. So let's just copy both of those regions so they last for the full eight bar duration of the piece. So in this video, we've looked at four separate ways of stretching audio to fit varying tempos. The first way that we did it was just within the main page. We held down Option and adjusted the left-hand corner of our region and dragged it back to the point where we wanted the audio to conform, back to four bars in length, and that time stretched that audio file. What we then did was to open up the audio editor and look at the time and pitch machine, allowing us to set a source and a destination tempo, and allowing ourselves also the opportunity to potentially create a transposition, a pitch change to that audio file. What we then did was to go back to the beginning and this time add flex editing to our original beat loop. By selecting slicing, what happened was that the detection went through and placed a transient marker on every single one of the detected hits. And what that means is I can change tempo as much as I like, and Logic will ensure that that audio file plays back in time. And then finally, we've taken another audio file and we've converted it to a sampler instrument, detecting all of those separate transients again and automatically mapping those to individual keys on our keyboard. And again, because they're now MIDI events, we can change the tempo and they'll stay in time.